So it takes Tom and Patty the same amount of time to get to school. Tom rides his bike, and he rides three miles in some number amount of time, which is what? Tom travels three miles in the same amount of time it takes Patty to travel nine miles, bike versus bus. Since the time is the same, we know that Patty must be traveling three times as fast. So whatever Tom's speed was, miles per hour, we triple that and we get Patty's. They want to know T in terms of P, that means solve for T. So if I divide both sides by 3, I get that T is equal to P over 3, or one-third P. Out of 170 randomly selected teenagers, 39 of them in this age group have a job. So we can say 39 out of 170 is comparable to how many out of 17 million. And even if we just leave it at 17, that's the same thing as getting rid of a zero here and moving the decimal place here, and our answer is 3.9 million. Practice twice as many minutes on Monday as she did on Tuesday. So Tuesday is x, then Monday is 2x. And if we add all this together, we get 2 hours and 45 minutes. So 2 times 60 plus 15 is 135. If I divide both sides by 3, x is equal to 45 minutes. And we want to know how much on Monday, so we take that times 2, and the answer is 90 minutes. So in this survey, if you count up how many total people were surveyed, that answer is 70. If you consider how many gave movies three or, or more stars, that answer is 50. Let's compare that to an unknown number of people out of 325. So you cross multiply 50 times 325 and you divide by 70. You get about 232, or C. So T is the total number of trees in the forest. That's going to be the denominator for sure. We know that H is the number of hickory, K is the number of oak trees, and then there's probably some other types of trees. If we want to know the probability of selecting a tree that is neither one of these, we take the total, minus H, minus O, divided by the total. Jennifer is mixing crunchy grain cereal with super grain cereal. Crunchy grain has 210 calories for every 0 0.75 cup. And super grain... 240 per cup. And they want to figure out the proportion of each type of cereal that will give you 270. So first let's convert this one to 1. And dividing by 3 fourths is the same as multiplying by 4 thirds. So I'll take 210 times 4 divided by 3. And this will be 280 per cup. That's, that's the crunchy grain one. The 240 is the super grain. So if it was half and half, I'd be at 260, so I need more of the crunchy grain than the super grain at a 3 to 1 ratio. So here's my quarter cup. And if you wanted to test to see if this worked, you could plug these numbers into this formula, and you do get 270. So object A has a mass of x, and object B has a mass of 1.1x. So which one's bigger? Well, object B is 10% bigger. If I wanted to get rid of the decimal, I could multiply both by 10, and this would be 10x, and this is going to be 11x. So a to b is 10 to 11. If a number is selected at random from data set x, what is the probability that it's also a number in data set y? So these three numbers are also in data set y. So 3 out of 5 are in that other set. So 34.6% of the students in this class reported they had at least two siblings. If they're representative of the entire state, you can just take 34.6% of the entire state. And what that tells you, so out of these 26 students, if 34.6% of them have at least two siblings, 
That means that 9 have two or more siblings. And out of the 26, 17 have one or fewer. So if the average class size is 26 and there's 1,800 classes, I can take this number here and multiply it by 1,800. And I get 30,600. Because they want to know the number of 8th grade students in the entire state who have fewer than two siblings. Observer A measures the intensity that's 16 times bigger than observer B. So we can compare the two that way. Intensity in this equation is right here. So A is what fraction of the distance of, of observer B. So what can I plug in for R to get a multiple of 16? If I'm looking for 1 over R squared, what can I plug in to get 16? Well, if I plug in 1 fourth and I have 1 over 1 fourth squared, 1 fourth squared is going to be 1 sixteenth. And if I take 1 over 1 sixteenth, that's the same thing as 16 floating all the way to the top. And these are equivalent. So gear A is rotated at 100 RPM. If you look at the ratio in teeth, 20 to 60. Every time gear A turns three times, gear B is going to turn once. So we're going to take 100 and we're going to multiply that by 1 to 3 ratio. Then, every time gear B turns once, gear C turns six times. So we're going to multiply by a 6 to 1 ratio. And overall, we'll end up at 200.